Hi guys, welcome to the In The Game Room podcast. This is an episode that I've been wanting to do for a very long time and uh, finally getting around to doing it tonight. So I'm calling this podcast the final word on wargaming scales and I'm using the word final in quotes kind of jokingly because no matter how well you explain some things to some people they will still argue. These are people that see one plus one and say, well, that one looks like a two, so maybe the answer is three. Some time ago, I made a podcast where I discussed why I hate the millimeter system that the wargaming world uses to describe their miniatures. The system works okay when it comes to figures, but it's useless when it comes to vehicles, aircraft, buildings, scenery, etc. Here's why. Imagine you want to build an 8 foot tall or 96 tall, uh, 96 inch tall wall in 28 millimeter scale. How do you determine the scale height of the wall? Do you multiply the full scale dimension by 28? Divide it by 28? No, as it turns out you divide it by 56. Or you can multiply it by 0 0.017857. And in the end you get 1.714 inches. This makes no sense to most people. So I wanted to once and for all explain what the actual scale equivalents are to the millimeter scales and how we arrive at them. First it needs to be explained what the millimeter scale means. The millimeter scales describe a figure measured from the bottom of their feet to eye level. Whatever that dimension is in millimeters is the scale of the figure. Now right off the bat, this system is flawed as it does not take into consideration tall people, short people, hobbits, etc. It only works with the average sized male human. Everything after that is just a best guess at you know, what looks right. So, how do vehicle and scenery makers get around this system? Well, we've come up with real scale equivalents to the millimeter figure scale system. Let's work out those equivalents now so everyone can know what they are once and for all. We start with the global average adult male height of 5 foot 8 and a half inches. It's 5 foot 10 inches for America, but we're going with the global average. That equals 1,739.9 millimeters for an average adult male, from the bottom of his foot to the top of his head. Now using standard proportions, we can figure out how tall the person is from the bottom of their feet to their eyes. It's about 91% of the total height, and that comes out to 1588.56 millimeters. So that is the height, the height of a adult male average height person on the planet Earth from the bottom of his feet to his eyes. Using that number we can start looking at war game scales in millimeters and figuring out what actual scale they are. Now I've created a model scale worksheet in Microsoft Excel that I've used thousands of times in my previous occupation as an aerospace model maker. With this spreadsheet I'll show it up here so you can see how it works. Um, with this spreadsheet, I enter the full scale dimensions of an object in the upper left hand corner up here. And the spreadsheet tells me how big that object will be in about a hundred different scales. This is very handy when a client would come to me and have no idea what scale model they wanted, but they would say the full scale part is 158.6 inches and I want a desktop model of it that's about nine inches. Using this spreadsheet, I can figure out that the best scale for the model is 1 20th scale, which makes the part about 9.28 inches long. We can use the same spreadsheet another way by entering 1,588.56 millimeters, this dimension here, into the dimension box. And then we can look at the gray right hand columns for our wargaming millimeter scale to actually see what proportional 
scales line up with them. Take a look at the spreadsheet, which I'll be showing up here, and look at the gray columns, and look for the number that comes closest to 28. And we'll see that there's one entry for 28.3671. 28.3671. So dropping the decimals, 28 millimeter wargaming scale is a perfect match for 156 scale. So this is why in the example earlier when somebody wanted to know how tall an 8 foot wall was in 28 millimeter, we divided 96 inches by 56 for 156 scale and got a final dimension of 1.714. So using this same spreadsheet here, we can determine that 28 millimeter scale is 156 scale. 20 millimeter equals 178 scale. 15 millimeter equals 1106 scale. 12 millimeters is 1 132nd scale. 10 millimeters is 1 160th scale, and 6 millimeters is 1 263rd scale. The number for 28 millimeter is pretty much what is expected. A lot of people will accept anything between 1 64th and 1 48th scale, and 156 falls right into the middle of that range. The number for 20 millimeter is a bit surprising, as most people would accept ranges from 172nd to 176th. 178, the actual scale, falls outside of that range. 172nd and 176 are used because models are available in those scales. The number for 15 millimeter is pretty well where you would expect it to be. Most people consider 1 100th through 1 one tenth as the acceptable range, and one one oh six falls right in there. For me, the big shock was six millimeter coming in at one two sixty third. Most models in this scale are one two eighty fifth scale or one three hundredth scale. Neither of those scales are anywhere near what six millimeter should be, and one three hundredth is very far off. Look at the graphic I'm showing you now, and you can see that a 6 millimeter figure would be perfectly sized along a 1 263rd scale M1 tank. You can walk under the barrel as you would expect. Take that, Take that same 6 millimeter figure and put him with a 1 285th scale tank, or even worse, a 1 300th scale tank, and he's slamming his head into the barrel something most humans would not be able to do without jumping, and that would just be a dumb idea because tank barrels are made of steel. So as somebody that has done the math and figured out what scales match up with what millimeter wargaming scales, I've gotten into several conversations in online forums and Facebook and things like that about, you know, what, what scale is this and what scale is that. And it amazes me how many people want to argue about it. Um, this is this is math. It's not something that's open for debate. It is or it isn't. And in this case it is. Um, I've had people say, well if you're saying that uh, 28 millimeter is 156 scale, how do you explain figures that are too big to fit inside vehicles? Well, that's easy. Those figures are too big. They're not 28 millimeter. They're mistakes. Somebody made a mistake or purposely made them too big, whatever the case was. Um, other people have said, well, well, how do you explain XYZ manufacturer? Their figures have big, huge, fat arms and big heads. Well, again, I don't explain that, that they're wrong. They're just, they're just wrong. Um, I don't know why I'm expected to, uh, explain that but apparently I am um, there's in the uh, in the 28 millimeter world there's something that people like to call heroic scale heroic scale means nothing heroic scale means they're not 28 they're too big um, so it's really it's it's not a scale it's just 28 millimeter figures in quotes that are just way too big um, 
I have a picture here that I'll put up over my shoulder to uh, give you some examples. These guys on the left, they're the motorcycle riders that came with this Rubicon model, which is 156 scale, which as we've determined is 28 millimeter. These guys, it's really hard to measure some figures because a figure has to be standing straight up just like this gentleman here, uh, you know, to measure them properly. But as close as I can figure, these 156 scale figures from the bottom of their feet to their eyes are right at 28 millimeter. So these are scale figures. Not only are they scale figures, but they're very well proportioned as far as their arms and their heads and hands and things like that. So these are kind of, uh, you know, these are kind of the gold standard for 28 millimeter and 156 scale. The figures have other issues as far as the level of detail and things like that, but as far as size and proportions, they're great. Then you look at something like uh, these figures over here from uh, Warlord Games. If you measure them from the bottom of the feet or the top of the base to their eyes, they're also 28 millimeter. So they are scale. However, Warlord likes to exaggerate their models a little as far as the, the thickness of the arms and the legs and the, and the thickness of the torso and the size of the heads. Um, I wouldn't call them heroic scale by any means because they're still 28 millimeters from the bottom of the foot to the eyes. They're 28 millimeter figures. They're just, I call them chunky. They're chunky style. They've got big ass arms and legs and big heads, but they're still the right scale as far as height goes. Um, these figures over here, these three here, I just received from a company in the UK, not in the UK, it was in Europe, somewhere in Europe. It might have been Germany, I'm not sure. Um, they're also called 28 millimeter miniatures, but they're not. This one here, from the bottom of the feet to the eyes, measures 30 millimeters. This one here is 29.5 and this one here is a whopping 32. Now these three miniatures here are of characters from a television show from way back in the 60s or 70s and that's why I bought them. They're not going to be used for gaming so I don't care that they're the wrong size but they are really really giant when you compare them to a, a standard 28 millimeter figure or a perfectly scaled 156 scale figure. They're just really really big but is just an example to show what people are calling 28 millimeter and it's not. Now I know some people in real life are taller, some people are shorter, so you can get away with a little bit of, you know, a little taller, a little shorter than 28, that's fine. But these guys, you know, these guys are just giants. They're just, they're just a whole nother scale, but they're still calling them 28. And that's the problem with that scale system. If they were calling these models 156 scale, well, you could actually measure this guy's leg and divide that measurement by 56 and say that guy's leg is 12 inches across. That's just wrong. But they don't do that. They just say it's 28 millimeter and, and they're done with it. So I think that pretty much establishes what the different scales are and how we come up with them. Uh, there is there is a there is a standard adult male uh, size on the planet Earth, and it is this size, and that comes out to this size from the feet to the eyes, and you can divide that number by different scales, and it comes out with a millimeter scale on the right there in the gray column. Just match up the closest one to what you want. If you want 15 millimeter, the closest one we have is about 14.98, that's really, really close, and that equals 1 106 scale. Um, same thing with like 20 millimeter, 20 millimeter, we have we come up with a dimension that's really close, 20.1084, that is 1 79th scale. So this spreadsheet here works for determining the equivalencies between actual model scales and millimeter scales. This is a spreadsheet, it's Excel, it just does math, it doesn't offer any opinions. Um, it, is, it is what it is, the numbers say what they say. So believe it or not, it is to be believed. Um, if anybody wants a copy of this 
the actual spreadsheet file so you can use it yourself. Uh, you'll just have to send me an email and I will email you the file. It's really handy for uh, you know figuring out how big something should be in different scales. If you know that you have a vehicle that is you know uh, 250 inches long you just type in 250 up here and then you look for the scale you want to model it in and it tells you what that dimension would be in that scale. Uh, it's it's uh, unit independent it doesn't matter if you're talking about millimeters, inches, feet, parsecs, light years, whatever. It's uh, you just type in the number and it tells you how many it will be in that scale. So I think that about wraps it up. Um, now you understand where people like me that make scenery and vehicles and things like that, how we've come up with a scale equivalency for the uh, wargaming scales. I'm sure there's going to be argument about this in the comment section and people are going to have their own opinions and whatnot. This is one of those topics where opinions don't really matter. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just simple math. Um, so whatever your opinion is, that's great. But this is, this is what it is. Once and for all, the final word on, uh, on gaming scales versus modeling scales. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching and keep on gaming. <laughs>